The fourth sort of privilege tree, Jesus carries his cross to Calvary. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. He does not give the temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.
hand of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all consolation. He comforts those who are in trouble with the same consolation we have received from Him. Now let us hear the psalm, psalm number 23, The Lord is my shepherd. Your response, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Lord, remember me in your kingdom. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures, where he gives me repose. Near restful waters, he leads me. He revive my broken spirit. Your response? Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. Your response? The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the side of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Your response? The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely, goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is with you. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers and be merciful to your son, Thomas Nainan, whom you have called from this life. Welcome him into the company of your saints in the kingdom of life and peace. We ask this, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy for us, you turn the darkness of death in the dawn of new life. Show compassion to your people in their sorrow. Be our refuge and our strength to lift us from the darkness of this grief to the peace of life of your presence. Your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by dying for us, conquered death, and by rising again, restored life. May we then go forward eagerly to meet him and after our life on earth. Be reunited with our brothers and sisters, where every fear will be right to be. We ask this in Christ for the Lord. Let us now say to you the three will be in the name of the Thank mm -hmm. you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in the risen Lord, we are here to celebrate this Holy Eucharist for the repose of the soul of our dear brother, Dr. Thomas Nainan, who left this world for his eternal abode on 13th September. We are here to bid farewell and say goodbye to our dear brother. We are also here to console and comfort his beloved wife, Professor Mary Nainan, his daughters, Dr. Miriam and Mrs. Susan, and his sons-in-law, grandchildren, and his family members and friends. We are here to express our spiritual solidarity with this family. My dear brothers and sisters, death brings intense pain, especially to the near and dear one, faith and celebration of hope. We are here to celebrate Thomas Nyman's life here on earth, his deeds of love and service. Death is also a celebration of life hereafter, for death is a passage to eternal life. Hence we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen and Christ will come again. Death is a celebration of hope. They say, to see the beauty of resurrection, hope not despair. Today we celebrate the memory of our Lady of Sorrows. May our Heavenly Mother bring Heavenly Mother Mary, who accompanied Jesus on his way of the cross, accompany us too during these moments of pain and sorrow. Every death is Jesus' message to all of us to get ready to go and to be alert every day. Let's then prepare ourselves to listen to that message of Jesus and to receive him in the Eucharist. Let us acknowledge our sinfulness. With a contrite heart, let us say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to eternal life. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant Thomas, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be alive but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, 
Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, the word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, your response will be. stand for gospel acclamation.
the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. From the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came to Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ the Son of God, who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I know that the reality of death and the loss that we are feeling today in everyone's hearts and minds is one of grieving and mourning. And in particular, the family of Nainan and the children and all the loved and near and dear ones, we are all feeling a kind of grief. And therefore, I extend to everyone who are close to Thomas Nainan, particularly the family members, a sense of sympathy and assurance of our prayers. But apart from this, I also stand before you to say that we are all united by another beautiful aspect, and that is called as faith. And because of that faith, I stand here to offer my consolation and my grievances, my sympathies to the family. There is a beautiful hymn that goes like this which I often sing for a funeral mass. We are pilgrims here on this land, march towards our homeland, always trusting in you, O Lord. Each day we journey forward, Guide us, O Shepherd, and lead us till the end. We know that life is a journey from birth to death, and whatever happens in between is all a pilgrimage. We are all pilgriming towards our God. We are making a journey towards heaven. And that is beautifully narrated through this captivating, captivating hymn. 
my dear brothers and sisters, I am recollected of an anecdote. One day, a grandchild and his granddad were walking towards a cemetery, a Christian cemetery which was full of gravestones, which were painted in white, and they looked very beautiful. And on every gravestone, there was a flower bouquet or a wreath kept. And this grandson, puzzled at all the gravestones he looked at, he called his granddad and asked, Granddad, Grandpa, why are these flowers painted on the gravestone? Why are these wreaths kept on the gravestones? And why are those names written there? The dates, the date of birth, and the place, date of death. And this grand, granddad said to the grandchild, my dear son, these people were living in these houses until now, and now God has called them, and therefore they have left these places and they have gone to heaven. And the boy, the grandchild, said to his granddad, and I hope that they have left their clothes here in these gravestones. What a beautiful way to explain what Christian death is, what a funeral place is, what a cemetery is, better than this little story. We are all pilgriming towards heaven. And on this day, I would like to propose three things, all starting from the letter G. The first thing is that we are all grieving today. We grieve because we have lost someone very close to us. We have lost someone who had loved us with all his heart. We have lost a friend, a companion, a good husband, a good parent. And therefore, we are all grieving because we have lost something in our lives. A writer says, grief is called as unfinished love. Grief is one of the things that we can last offer to a loved person. And that unfinished love swells in our eyes as tears. It sits in our, the hollow of our hearts and it overwhelms as grief or tears. My dear brothers and sisters, we cannot control this grief. The more we grieve means the more we loved that person. Yesterday we cannot hear Thomas Nynan's voice. We cannot speak to him. We find that emptiness in our hearts. We cannot listen to what good things he says about us. The only thing we can say is shed our tears and say, I love you. We all loved you as a good husband. We all loved you as a good parent. And that is what grief is all about. And therefore, in the Old Testament, we see that Abraham wept when his wife Sarah had died. When David had lost his son Absalom, he also cried bitterly. Even Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus wept bitterly because he had lost a friend. And my dear brothers and sisters, today we have lost a great brother in Christ, Thomas Nynan. And we are all grieved because that is how we express our pain. That is how we express our love. The second thing that I would like to say today is God. Whenever tragedy strikes, we always ask a question, where is God? When something happens in our life, we always ask a question to God, why did this happen to me? Why did I lose a loved one? Why did I lose my son or daughter who was of a very young age? And this is the question that we ask every, every time we come for a funeral or we ask, uh, we, we meet the beloved members, the grieving members, why did this happen to me? And to that all Jesus answers. Jesus says, I am in control of this life. I am the one who is in charge of your life. And therefore, one who has come to me will always believe in me. And because of this belief, we all say to Jesus that I have been faithful to you. I was worthy to you. I was living according to your commandments. And that is the reward that God gives us. He takes us from our sickness. He takes us from the curse of sin and bring us to his everlasting happiness. 
The third G that I would like to say to you is glory. Jesus has promised us eternal happiness. He has promised us a reward. He has made our hope, our despair into hope. He has put an end to all the turmoils and he has granted us, he has assured us peace. And that is what we are all here for, not only to celebrate the life and death of Thomas and but also to share in the resurrection of Christ. And that is the promise that Jesus has given to us, that we shall all rise again one day, and we will all meet the ones who have departed from our families. My dear brothers and sisters, again I am reminded of Sister Susan Tulan, a great nun who has composed this hymn, I am the bread of life. And some of the words goes like this. No one can come to me unless the Father calls him and I will raise him up and I will raise him up and I will raise him up on the last day. We have come to believe that we will all be resurrected one day and therefore we will meet our loved ones again. I end with a quote, those whom we love, they never depart from us. Their voice may be unheard, their bodies and their presence will be unseen, but they will be walking with us all through our life and we will be remembering them in our families. Their memories are always with us their voice is always with us. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast of Our Lady of Sorrows. Our Lady also suffered grief. Our Lady Mary also suffered the absence of God in times of trouble of her son. Our Lady also participated in the glory that Jesus has shown to us and to every one of his believers. May I pray that the beautiful soul of Thomas Nainan, the peace with which we welcomed us, the peace with which he embraced us, the talks, the voices with which he spoke to us, may with the same welcome Jesus and Mother Mary and all the angels of heaven welcome him in, into this heavenly bliss. Amen. kindly rise. My dear brothers and sisters, we are all pilgrims here on earth and we are all marching towards our heavenly Jerusalem, the heavenly destination. But very often we are tossed up by challenges of life. That is one of them. And during these moments of pain and sorrow, Jesus says, do not be afraid. I am with you. Let's place before our heavenly father our prayers, our intentions, especially for the repose of the soul of our dear friend Thomas Nainan. Prayers of the faithful. Our response will be, merciful Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our bishop, priest, religious leaders, and all those who proclaim the consolation of Christ's death and resurrection to families and communities in sorrow. Increase their faith and make them bearers of lasting and mean meaningful hope. We pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, you promise eternal life to all who follow your way. Raise up all who have died. We pray especially for Appa in gratitude for his life in family and for those with whom he came in contact. May Christ give him a place at the banquet of the kingdom of heaven and share the joys of the kingdom of light, happiness and peace. We pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who mourn, Nainan family, spouse Mary Nainan, dear daughters Millie and Susan, son-in-laws and grandchildren. They may be assured of Christ's closeness to them in their sorrow and find strength and comfort through their faith in Jesus, our risen Savior. Let us pray that the emptiness may be gradually filled with peace and hope, which Christ's resurrection gives to each of us. We pray. 
Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. As we reflect on the contribution of Appa to his family, friends, and the wider community, let us remember him with affection. May we strive for perfection in the service of Christ, his church, and the community in general. We pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. As we pray for the soul of Appa, let us remember the deceased, those we have loved and cherished, all the dead of this parish, those who died recently, and all those who have no one to remember them. May you, O God, welcome them into the radiant light of your presence. We pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. God, our loving Father, with childlike faith and confidence, we are placed before you, our heart's desires, our prayers. We ask you to give eternal rest to our brother, Thomas. Receive our prayers, accept them, and on our journey towards our heavenly destination, help us to live a good life and to die a good death so that we can enjoy the eternal bliss in your presence. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Thomas, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis R. Pope, Gerald R. Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Thomas Nainan, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Please be seated. I would like to make an announcement. This is the sacred moment of receiving Jesus in the form of Eucharist. And this is only for the persons who are baptized in the Catholic Church. The others can sit in their place and make quiet prayer. Thank you.
Let us pray. Lord our God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Thomas may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. members of Thomas Nainan, Mrs. Mary Nainan, children, Dr. Miriam John, Mrs. Susan Nainan, son-in-laws Dr. Jason John and Dr. Juby Jacob Philip, grandfather of Lorraine, Lou, Ria and Anne. Friends and well-wishers of Thomas Nainan, and dear brothers and sisters, please accept my heartfelt condolences on behalf of priests present here in this church and who attended this funeral mass. We have offered this holy mass for the repose of the soul of Thomas, our beloved brother, of his last step and last journey here on earth. From here, his lifeless body is taken to the church cemetery for burial. This will remind all of us the words of the Bible. Remember man, you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. Naked you came, and naked you shall return. Empty-handed you came, and empty-handed you will return. Except the good deeds you have performed will accompany you. Once again, the Bible says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. That is, dear friends, man's life. Dear friend, everyone born will die one day or the other, sooner or the later. Since man is created image and likeness of God, he will rise from the dead and has given the assurance that all those who believe in him will rise from the dead to eternal life. Dear friends, our beloved brother Thomas, who believed in Christ and followed him in his life, and lived his precepts and teaching of Christ and teaching of the church will rise from the dead to live his life in heavenly kingdom for all eternity. And this is our hope and this is our faith. Yet we don't mourn his death but give thanks to God because our dear brother Thomas lived for his family and loved them and he served the society that made him to dedicate his life. He was a very good Christian. God has rewarded him with the gift of eternal life and from there <coughs> he will pray for his family and to us, may his soul rest in peace. Dear brothers and sisters, I would like to thank. First of all, I thank Reverend Father Dennis Desa, the parish priest of Thurtum Church, who offered the Mass for the departed soul of our dear beloved brother, 
Thomas. I thank Father Rolvin Fernandez for preaching homely. I thank very Reverend Father Valerian Mendonca, the Rector of Milagris Cathedral Kalyanpur, for concelebrating the Holy Mass and also he will now conduct the final rites of the funeral. I thank Reverend Father Anil de Souza, the parish priest of Parampali Church, for concelebrating the Holy Mass. I thank Father Ralston for concelebrating this Holy Mass. Thank you and God bless you. Let us now pray together. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. In formation, a requiem mass will be kept on 18th of September 2023, Monday at 11 a.m. here in Christ Church, Manipal. On behalf of this family, I invite you for the Holy Mass. May I now request Dr. Thomas to offer eulogy to our dear beloved brother, Thomas Nainan. Dr. Nainan Thomas, we fondly call him Bobby, and he's my uncle. I call him Bochasin. Son of late Dr. Isaac Thomas and late Mariama Thomas was born on 3rd April 1940. His father, Dr. Isaac Thomas, was one of the first Catholic doctors in Kerala. He served during the Second World War treating wo wounded soldiers in the trenches. His mother was a housewife who lovingly raised six children with care, dedication and discipline. Nainan Thomas was born in Trivandrum as the third child and had one brother who is no more and three sisters. He pursued his veterinary science degree at Trishur Veterinary College and completed his MSc and PhD at the National Diary Research Institute in Karnal, India's premium institute for diary research. After working for some time in Kerala, he joined Syndicate Bank Manipal in 1976. During his tenure at Syndicate Bank Manipal, the then chairman Pai appointed him as, a, as general manager of Canara Milk Union. It was initially a loss-making unit, but through his hard work and selfless service, he transformed it into a profit, profitable unit. After his promotion as a divisional manager, at Syndicate Bank, he was transferred to Cochin as the principal of Syndicate Bank State uh, Staff Training College and later to Bombay as chief manager of Syndicate Bank in Chembur. Wherever he went, he worked diligently with determination, commitment, perseverance and motivation. He possessed a wonderful sense of humor and viewed everything with positive attitude, even while facing pain. He believed in Gandhian principles of simple living and high thinking. There are a lot of uh, comments which had come uh, when the obituary was posted. Uh, so many people who worked with him, who described in few words, I'll put some described him as, you know, great manners and etiquettes. Some people spoke about his English language, never a grammatical mistake elegant thought process and expressions, cool. They say, worked for so many years, never have seen him getting angry. Very receptive and, and so on and so forth. He survived by his wife, Mrs. Neri, Mary Maman, daughters, Dr. Miriam John and Susan Nainan, son-in-laws, Dr. Jason John and Dr. Juby, uh, Jacob Philip, and grandchildren, Lauren, Luca, Ria, and Anne. Dr. Nainan Thomas was a person with a wonderful sense of humor who never demanded anything. Death cannot kill what never dies. 
Every life is noted and cherished, and nothing loved is ever lost or perished. Wherever a beautiful soul has been, there is a trail of beautiful memories. The greatest tribute to the dead is not grief, but gratitude. The very purpose of life is to serve. That is why God has given us life. I am a little pencil in the hands of God, and you send love letters to world people without even saying goodbye when they when their loved one dies we don't live without them but there are things with death cannot touch we all die and the purpose is not to live forever the purpose is to contribute something to the society which dr nainan thomas has done throughout his life and let's all pray for the uh, departed soul thank you just a word of thanks to the parish priest reverend father romeo lewis for accommodating us for allowing us permitting us to celebrate this holy eucharist thank you very much father romeo and we wish you all the very best and i would like to thank all the we are united by faith as father said we are united by friendship also there are quite a few non catholic friends our hindu brethren other friends are here we are united by friendship i see dr rp pai who is my good friend also we we thank you for joining us for this celebration one thing i can say th dr thomas said many things about him i would say just one word he was a good man good man that is the greatest certificate and recognition one can have forget about your phd your doctor your professor if anyone calls us he or she was a good human being that is the greatest reward recognition and certificate we can have thomas was one of them he was a good man thank you very much friends i request very reverend father yeah uh, someone would like to propose the word of thanks please come up thank you i'd like to thank everyone here today on behalf of our family my mother mary nine and miriam and susan and our extended families I'd like first to thank our clergy, Reverend Father Romeo Lewis, the parish priest Christchurch. We thank him for all the years of communion he has given our family. For the main celebrant, Reverend Father Dennis Dessa. Father regularly visited our father over the years and indeed was with him during his last few days of illness. Reverend Father Valerian Mendoza, rector of Milagros Cathedral and it has been a great support you have been to our family. Reverend Father Rolwin, for his homily, Reverend Father Royston, who came all the way from Manglore, and Reverend Father Anil, we thank you immensely. I'd like to thank the other members here, the Ward Gurkha, Miss Cynthia De Silva, and Mr. Lawrence Fernandez, who led the prayers along with all the ward members at our residence. We sincerely thank Mrs. Regina Fernandez and Mr. Pramod, who have been a constant and extremely helpful support for my mother in her moments of crisis. We thank Mrs. Matilda and Alex Lewis. We thank all of the members of the St. Vincent de Paul and SFO for the continuous prayers for our dearly beloved father. We'd like to thank Sister Violet for preparation involved in the service. We thank all the doctors from KMC who were very gracious and supportive for our father during his medical needs, including Dr. Shubha Sheshadri, Dr. S. N. Rao, Dr. Benjamin Joseph and Dr. Susan Benjamin, Dr. Ram Kumar and Dr. Varney, Dr. Gabriel, Dr. Leslie, Dr. Tom, Dr. Ramnaranan, Dr. George and Elsa Verghese. To all the nursing and the technical staff of KMC, we thank you. I'd like to thank Dr. Thomas George for his wonderful eulogy and for all of our family members who came here today. I'd like to thank to Vinit and the choir, thanks to Prakash and Jokshim for their funeral arrangements. If there are any individual names that I have forgotten, please accept my sincere apologies.
but we know how much you have done for our family. Finally, I'd like to thank everyone here today. You have been a crucial part of the fabric of our father and our family's lives. We thank you and we will remember forever, eternally, the contributions that you have given us. Thank you. Kindly rise, where Reverend Father Valerian Mendonca will conduct the funeral right now, and later in the cemetery, Father Anil will conduct the ceremony. With faith in Jesus Christ, we reverently bring the body of our brother Thomas Nyden to be buried in its human imperfection. Let us pray with confidence to God, who gives life to all things, that he will raise up this mortal body to the perfection and the company of the saints. May God give him a merciful judgment and forgive all his sins. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, lead him safely home to be at peace with God our Father. And may he be happy forever with all the saints in the presence of the Eternal King. of God come to his aid, come to meet him, angels of the Lord, receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself, may the angels lead you to Abraham's side, receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Give him eternal rest, O Lord and may your light shine on him forever. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Father, into your hands we commend our brother Thomas. We are confident that with all who have died in Christ, he will be raised to life on the last day and live with Christ forever. We thank you for all the blessings you gave him in this life to show your fatherly care for all of us and the fellowship which is ours with the saints in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. Welcome our brother Thomas to paradise and help us to comfort each other with the assurance of our faith until we all meet in Christ to be with you and with our brother forever, through Christ our Lord. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Amen.
Jesus Christ, by the three days you lay in the tomb, you made holy the graves of all who believe in you, and even though their bodies lie in the earth, they trust that they, like you, will rise again. Give a brother peaceful rest in this grave until that day when you, the resurrection and the life, will raise him up in glory. Then may he see the light of the presence, Lord Jesus, in the kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Since Almighty God has called our brother Thomas Lynan from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth from which it was made. Christ was the first to rise from the dead, and we know that he will rise up our mortal bodies to be like his in his glory. We commend our brother 
to the Lord. May the Lord receive him into his feet and raise up his body on the last day. Let us pray for our brother to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. The man who believes in me will live even if he dies and every living person who puts his faith in me will never suffer eternal death. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. We ask this in faith. Your response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you wept at the death of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. We ask this in faith. Lord, hear our prayer. You raise the dead to life. Give our brother eternal life. We ask this in faith. Lord, hear our prayer. You promise paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. We ask this in faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother was washed clean in baptism and anointed with the oil of salvation. Give him fellowship with all your saints. We ask this in faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now say together Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we give you to us as we give us to us, and lead us into our sins, and deliver us into our sins. Lord, listen to our prayers for our brother, and you always desire to do your will. So, in your mercy, forgive whatever wrong he may have done. By his Christian faith, he was united with all your believing people. Now, in love and mercy, give him a place with your angels and saints. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Give him eternal rest, O Lord, and all may your light shine on him forever.